Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris from weartesters.com. Today we have the performance review on the Nike KD7. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right guys, so as you can see, we have storytelling traction. It looks similar to that pressure map that we saw with the Kobe 9s, but this is actually similar to more of a weather map. Um, in my opinion, this stuff works great. I do prefer the Kobe 9 and the 28 slightly more. Those two are, in my opinion, the best of the best. But if you're going for something just as good, uh, but not quite at that level, this is probably the next best thing. One thing that I do like about it is that it's a thicker uh, grooved traction pattern. So you can definitely get down with these outside and they won't wear out as quickly as the other two shoes that I just mentioned. So the cushion setup is heel zoom. This is actually a max zoom unit, similar to what we saw in the LeBron 10. And then we also have a smaller rectangle eight millimeter zoom unit in the forefoot here, along with lightweight Phylon throughout. Personally, I found this setup to be extremely comfortable and very responsive from both the heel and forefoot standpoint. So whether you're crashing on your heels or hitting off the ball of your foot right here, you're getting the best comfort uh, level and responsiveness all in one with the zoom units in place. So, you know, whether you're a forefoot rider or a heel striker, you're getting the best of both worlds. So the materials probably aren't for everyone. Basically, we have a hyper rev setup in the front where it's all mesh and fuse along with dynamic flywire as the lacing system. And then in the back, we have something more similar to like the LeBron series with the hyperposite backing. What this does is it gives you the ultimate range of motion and flexibility up front. And then you have the extreme sturdiness and durability in the back. So heel containment is great. And then it's not sacrificing any of your forefoot movements whatsoever. If you drag your toes, there is a little bit of fuse right here and the rubber bumps up just a, a slight bit. So it will protect it somewhat, but overall, um, if you get stepped on a lot, this is probably going to take some damage, as you can see. As far as fit, personally, I went true to size. I would not go up or down half a size. True to size for me fit perfect. It was actually the first KD since the KD3 that didn't pinch anywhere on my foot, whether it be the pinky toe or the midfoot or the base of the tongue. Um, this was the first shoe that actually fit my foot as if it was meant for it. Lockdown, I thought was great. The forefoot area started off so snug that I actually didn't need to lace these up uh, very tightly. It wasn't after until maybe two hours where the mesh started to break in a little bit. And then I really needed to use this, which is where you'll see the dynamic flywire really come into play, really holds your foot down as you can see through there. So for lateral movements, it's keeping it caged in and on that footbed. Midfoot strap, I personally can't feel it, um, but it is here. So, you know, if you want to tighten things up around that area, you can, um, again, it wasn't anything that I found to be extremely noticeable. And then the hyperposite back here, I thought was great because it's definitely keeping everything contained uh, when you're shifting side to side. It's allowing your heel to stay right in place, right where it's supposed to be, which will help prevent ankle injuries. As far as heel slipping goes, I did not experience that whatsoever. Um, for me, these just fit like a glove. Uh, the only time that I ever experienced heel slip was right in the beginning of my first wear. Um, and it was only on my left foot and it went away as soon as I started sweating because the sweat and the sock really was sticking to this liner here. Um, but every time after I would play in these things, they just got better and better. Ventilation is decent. You have it right around this area and then up the tongue. Everything else uh, underneath the mesh is fuse or nylon. Um, it's not going to create like an abundance of airflow, but it's enough to where it's allowing some heat to escape, which is great. The back area, because there's posit, there's no ventilation, that's a good thing. Uh, the more moisture and, and uh, uh, restricted airflow that you have back here, the better. That way this will hopefully mold to your feet sooner rather than later. So as far as support, most of that came from the overall fit. Again, the dynamic flywire, once this mesh kind of loosened up a little bit, the strap kind of, and then the hyperposite, definitely. Uh, this is really what keeps your foot secure right in the back here. And then for torsional support, we actually have these little bars here, which are supposed to mimic the metatarsal bones within your foot, which is a natural uh, piece of your own equipment. I thought that this was really interesting. It worked really well. Um, it allowed for plenty of range of motion without restrictiveness, except for right where you need it, right here at the arch of the foot. All right, guys, that pretty much takes care of everything. In my opinion, this is one of my favorite shoes of the year. It's probably one of the most well-rounded, um, at least from Nike's brand. So if you guys are interested in this guy right here, you can get them now over at finishline.com. Retail price is about 150. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your support. And until next time, guys, have a good one.